for April the 22nd, 2022, we talk about Ikai, yes, your grace, Into the Pit, and more. Welcome to Level 411. My name is Cole Ross. I'm Dennis Furia. I'm David Mysmith. I'm Ben Merkel. And you are listening to The Level. It's a podcast for people who love video games. Welcome back, David. Hey, good to be back. Yeah. What uh what you been up to, bud? Uh not too much. We've got the uh big uh local comic book convention the end of this week. So hmm. getting uh prepared for that. Uh I'm Are you cosplaying? Doing... Huh? Are you cosplaying? Yeah, uh, yes and no. I mean, I'm not doing a character. I'm doing uh, putting together kind of a, uh, oh, what did kind of the, the River City Ransom, the like ja- uh, Japanese, like tough guy type, uh, yeah, you know, thing, you know, kind of that archetype. Mm-hmm. A bouncer. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then uh, I'm excited. Uh, one of my favorite bands, uh, Cybertronic Spree, is playing. So they're. I think I've mentioned before, they dress up all in elaborate Transformers costumes and play, uh, like, 80s and synthwave and, like, a lot of, um, oh, Saturday morning cartoon theme songs and stuff like that. hmm So just kind of, you know, silly fun. Yeah, you've talked about it before. Yeah. Nice. Sweet. Sounds like that'll be a fun weekend. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Neat. Uh, more exciting than what I got. I've uh, literally, uh, oh no, I'm going to be, I'm going to be taking care of some family that weekend. Mm. So yes, more exciting, but also I could not go and do something more exciting without, uh, uh, abandoning a responsibility, which kids is not cool. So (laughs) (laughs) yeah. So, you know, it is cool taking care of sick family members. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, if I may um, quote uh, National Treasure movie uh, Sonic 2, uh, it, being a hero is not about taking care of yourself. It's about looking out for other people. Is that Knuckles? Oh, I thought you meant National Treasure <laughs> movie National Treasure. Yeah, <laughs> I, got, I got real excited halfway through that sentence. Yeah, yeah. And then you just kind of so, kind of let all the wind out of those yeah, things. I, I realized when I used that phrase, I was like, nope, that's a thing. Damn Already it. a movie. Uh, is that the, the, a false flag there? I, I, I juked you uh, the, to make sure you were paying attention. The Godfather so, of the... all movies. Splash starring yeah. Tom Hanks and Daryl Anna. <laughs> uh, it's like there was an ad um, for Cadillac that just said it's the Cadillac of cars, uh, which I appreciate. Well, I knew if I led with it's just like I heard in the, the movie Sonic 2, everyone would instantly tune out. Well, yeah, because um, you're talking so, about Sonic 2. <laughs> yes. Did you see this recently with your children? I did. That's my that's thing all. I did. Oh, well, that's, that's my, a silver lining of that story. That's my banter. That's so I'm fi- I found a new way to shove video games into our banter. That's a movie, so it counts. You can't, uh, there's nothing I can do. Yeah. <laughs> and that's it. That's oh. the thing you do with your friends and creative partners. Try and get around the boundaries they set up. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so, I think I saw this week uh, one of my favorite head to- headlines of, of all time. Hmm. Uh, which was basically in what we promise is not the plot line to the next uncharted game apparently the um the warship that was just sunk off the coast of ukraine uh may have contained a piece of the true cross yep it was their flag you know, uh, what yeah i know it was their it was their flagship and at least uh, reports were that they had, uh, you know, in order to christen it, because the whole big thing is that Russia is, uh, you know, a Christian country, blah, blah, blah. Uh, don't, don't dig too deep on that. Uh, <laughs> um, like, yeah, no, our, our flagship, we're going to put a piece of the true cross on there, you know, this irreplaceable um, artifact. Yeah. Um, wow. So, womp, womp, uh, you know. One can only hope that it has, uh, you know, that it was in a, a, a container that would, you know, help it survive. What is the, yeah. what is the true cross? It it is, I'm serious. Cross. Uh, okay. Like, 
I, yeah, I, I don't know why they call it the True Cross. I mean, I guess there must have been lots of people doing copies or something. I don't know. I, I imagine fake <laughs> I, relic. You can, you can find a cross or two if you if you wander around America long enough. Wow. Hmm. Well, I, I told you guys <laughs> we we left the green room because we we're getting things were getting too depressing <laughs> with the Hitler talk, and now all of a sudden. <laughs> Clara, I, I just meant there's lots of churches. Oh, uh, I, I immediately yes, went no, that, to clam that one shit. Too. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm going to take credit for your version because that's more clever. Uh, <laughs> so, so, so too, anyway. Um, yeah, no, how, that's why you never prime the podcast with Hitler. It just gets <laughs> bad places. <laughs> what? Um, uh, uh, oh, how did? How do the kids like Sonic Two? Uh, they loved it. It was it was a a very good kids movie. Cool. Um, literally walking out of the theater, Luke it says, "So can we like watch Sonic Three at home?" Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, I, I don't think that exists yet. Uh, um, you could, but you, you could, you could download the Genesis collect. Oh wait, Sonic Three isn't on the collections that are available yet. Oh, is that right? There, there's one coming out where it's going to be available, but it's uh for uh, specifically it's a music licensing thing. Uh, Sonic Three oh. just doesn't show up. Yeah. Mm, huh. Yeah, I've got uh I think on PS2 I've got like a comprehensive Sonic collection. Um mm. but I don't I don't know what's in that. Yeah. But uh you know, as like I said, as a kids movie, like uh kids action movie specifically, I think it did everything it needed to do. Mm -hmm. Um as an adult, it was, you know, it was fun to watch Jim Carrey be Jim Carrey. Yeah. Um but I know he's, you know, he's a polarizing actor. You either like watching him on a screen or you hate watching him on a screen. Yeah. Um Oh, go ahead. Yeah, so that's my kind of question here is, like, he seems amazing for that role and, you know, is somehow exactly what I would imagine Dr. Robotnik uh, to be. Yes. However, my question is, and why I can't decide, is that, like, fun and amazing? It's, I guess or sad like it's <laughs> is, is this like when you see samuel jackson in some weird role and you're like oh that's awesome he's doing something fun or is this like washed up actor that can you know is forced to make video game movies i don't think Man. he's forced to do anything he doesn't have to work another day in his life i think that he uh no yeah no no once once you uh sell your soul to make video game movie or to make movies then they have you <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, he he announced uh, not to get too far off topic, but he announced that he was retiring from acting, yeah. um, and it is it is odd to me, yeah, that that uh, Sonic Two was his choice to go out on. Yeah. It'll, um, make, it'll make a shitload yeah. of money, and lots of kids will like remember him fondly for it. That doesn't seem well, weird. Uh, yeah, I, I think the consensus as well is like, hey, Jim Carrey did a really good job in that movie. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in in the first one as well, he was just you know fun to watch uh, yeah. as long as you are not allergic to Carrey. Um, and and so that you know that's fun. And and basically the the other parts of the movie that are fun relate in some way to him. Like all the characters' best moments are you know playing off of him or interacting with him in mm -hmm. some way. Um, and so yeah, that that's coming from like a me, what I want to see uh, yeah. factor. Um, but yeah, if, if you got kids, uh, and you want them to see something exciting, uh, you know, Sonic two, Sonic two is good stuff. Cool. It's, it's two hours long though for a kid's oh, movie. That's an eternity. Oh no. Um, Especially at the theater. Ugh. Yeah. And there's, there's some bloat in there. I don't, I don't know who it's like the, um, I, I should look up the actress's name. Um, but she, she plays like, uh, the, the sister-in-law that's getting married in Sonic two. Okay. Um, and uh, she, like whoever her agent is, they, they deserve a raise because she got so much screen time, <laughs> um, and was so irrelevant to the plot. <laughs> Huh. Um, yeah. So she, she has a whole arc and every time she's on screen, it's like, okay, I, there's nothing meaningful happening here. I kind of, I kind of want to see Sonic now. <laughs> uh, um but yeah it's a, it's good times and uh that uh means that i officially uh achieved my goal uh you know at some point in the pandemic it evolved into my goal of having sonic be the last movie i watched pre-lockdown mm -hmm. um and sonic 2 be the first movie that i watched in theaters i should say uh, yeah. post-lockdown you you, you, so. you bookended it 
I am, I am, I, I cannot express how much joy that brings me. <laughs> and yes, I acknowledge how weird that is. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, bleak would be my word, but there we go. <laughs> People do weird things during the pandemic. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Look, no one will ever be able to take that from me, no matter what <laughs> happens from here. <laughs> uh, like, like Jim Carrey, you're going to go out on top. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope I'm not going out soon here but uh, let's, yes, to, yes, let's yes, talk I, after the show <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh so that was me i watched watched uh, the sonic 2 movie cool uh ben how about you what's going on not much today was a beautiful day went for a run uh i'll just talk about random stuff i've been watching a lot of civil engineering videos that talk about how u.s roads kind of suck and european mm-hmm. roads are a lot better um hmm. So that's it. Uh, it's talking specifically about like uh, what they call a strode, which is like what they call like the like six lane, like suburban type road that goes yeah. to a bunch of like parking lots and how basically like it's not maintainable and it basically will crumble in like 25 years. Mm-hmm. But you just build another one somewhere else. And that yeah. kind of like is how you try and fix a problem. Anyway, just really one, interesting for me, at least. So just one more lane, just one more lane. Yeah, no, I mm-hmm. I really like <laughs> reading about like, oh, yeah, here's how cities die. Exactly what we do here. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You know, the the just one more lane thing is a lot like just one more line. It it's, never stops there. Oh no. Just one more just one more <laughs> turn in civilization. Mm-hmm. Nearly Imagine nearly ruining now uh living in the deep south. I mean lots of I mean places like that, uh, you know, with the six lane highways leading to the sub- suburbs, one imagines. Yep. Yeah. On a ha- on a happier note, I'm excited about this Friday because the Northman comes out, and then there's a concert I'm going to get to on Friday. Oh, true, uh, Northman. I didn't know that was coming out so soon. Uh, who yep. are you, who are you going to see? Parquet Courts. Okay. They're a punk rock type band. Cool. No, uh, I, I I literally have nothing. Like I was going to spring off of that and say that. Oh, uh, Wilco, the 20th anniversary of Yankee Hotel Foxtrot, that's coming out. That was oh, announced, shit. the special edition, but that's not a show that I'm going to. Um, so it's a little bit less exciting. <laughs> I could I could talk about the time I saw Wilco 18 years ago. <laughs> I, that's right. Our college music is oldies now. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Uh, but, but yeah, literally nothing. Uh, 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 you know, I, the more I dwell on it, the more I feel sad. I think we ought to talk about video games. So <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> why don't we uh, do a regular kind of show? What with the uh, the grind of the multiplayer and the end boss, and we can get started with the grind. The grind, where we talk about the games we have been playing over the last period of time or so. David, you've been away the longest, so I will throw it to you first. Uh, so I um, I relapsed and uh, reinstalled Destiny Two. Okay. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. So supposedly, uh, the the Witch King or Witch Queen, whatever, uh is is really good so i know they keep telling me yeah yeah it gets better guys um <laughs> okay yeah no i know that song and dance yeah yeah um i don't know i i guess my for for better or for worse my biggest impression here is just how incredibly hostile the game is to coming back after uh after you've uh done it like you've missed uh some time okay mm-hmm. so, is, is there no way to like jump to the content or events that you missed uh, on the way to uh, get exactly. back up the power curve so um the basically all of the um all of the content before forsaken i believe is is just straight up or no forsaken and before uh which is um like the first three expansions just don't exist anymore. There is no way to play them. Oh, huh. They uh, officially got rid of everything that was in their deluxe. We're giving you everything version that I bought at the launch. Just, hmm. So weird. Thank move. you, Bungie. <laughs> yeah. So I think 
So they're then doing a thing where, like, every season, uh, some of the expansions get retired and some of the retired ones come back. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, the thing is, the storyline now is, like, name-dropping people and events that I have no idea what happened. Ugh. Um... The so that's that's uh you know that's kind of crap. It's also um very uh nickel and dimey. So mm -hmm. I I bought the uh the most recent expansion, the the Witch Queen, which was on sale for like uh forty bucks, something like that. And um, the thing is that doesn't like they don't do the thing where like if you buy the most recent expansion you get credit for all the previous ones mm -hmm. uh so that further kind of inflames the uh the you know kind of hole in the storyline because i now actually haven't played like the last i think five or six expansions effectively do you think <laughs> that they would feel confident that like youtube lore explainers could shore that up and they can just just leave those holes there yeah i don't know i mean part of it is it's not so much important to me like it's not so much for me at least a thing of you know what you know knowing or not knowing what happened uh so much as is the game is explicitly written assuming you you were there and made the things happen oh huh so you know it's very much you know talking about things quote quote you did that i never did <laughs> hmm. uh the other thing is they also um have a uh a kind of dlc you can pay for that's the like 30th and issue anniversary uh pack that's um some sort of like you know extra dungeon or something Hmm. And they uh they charge for the uh season pass. Okay. And yeah, so and just I think the worst thing is just a lot of these um a lot of things don't necessarily work real well without the season pass. So like uh you know, one of the main uh rewards you get for uh for leveling are in effect loot boxes and your ability to open them up i think is limited if you don't have the season pass <laughs> so it's like hey your, your, your reward is literally something that takes up space yeah so it's so it's really weird it's gotten uh super super toxic with that stuff which is too bad because the game's gotten a lot better Hmm. Um, oh, I should say the other thing is then just they've added like crafting, so there's now like 82 bazillion different, um, you know, currencies and materials and stuff like that that I'm picking up. So this is just getting, it's becoming a cluttered nightmare. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I would say it's, it's interesting to me seeing the comparison to, uh, Warframe in that uh you know warframe instead of just being like you know all the you know this kind of just you know let's throw a bunch of just random you know loot things it'll be like each expansion will have you know at most say like five weapons stuff like that they're all very bespoke you know uh created that have very specific you know roles within the game that sort of thing so it just, yeah, this just seems like a much more um, slapdash approach. Mm. On the more positive side, uh, the gameplay itself, still a lot of fun. Um, they are slowly revamping all of the classes so that, um, you know, one element at a time where instead of it being kind of set abilities it's a uh mix and match so you can choose from you know a bunch of different uh options on how your ultimate works and you know different perks that uh synergize with things that sort of thing mm -hmm. uh they've only added it uh 
for uh, the void element so far, uh, which I'm playing as a warlock, and that's kind of your most explicit, like, caster-themed uh, class for that. Hmm. But it's still a lot of fun. I basically built built the character where when I kill someone using one of my special abilities, I then get a buff that for 10 seconds, if I uh, kill another person, I instantly heal to full health and the uh, ability, uh, you know, the duration refreshes. And then the rest of my abilities are basically... Um, oh, melee attacks, refilling my grenade, uh, make my grenade cooldown get shorter. Mm -hmm. So in effect, I can just like toss a grenade and then run around meleeing enemies as quickly as I can. As long as I can keep up the pace, I'm, you know, relatively tanky, not so much because I have high health, but because I'm just healing really quick. Okay. <laughs> And um, and from what I've seen, that doesn't, for the most part, seem overpowered. It just, you know, seems like, you know, that's a specific build that I put together. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, so that's a lot of fun. And then on the storyline, um, so there's always been a, a potential sub-story of the fact that it's not completely uh clear that you're got you are actually one of the good guys okay uh so you know kind of the uh the backstory is that to you know to destiny is that this giant like base deity moon robot you know, mm -hmm. appears in orbit of Earth and, you know, ushers in this golden age for humanity. But it has this enemy that's the quote-unquote darkness that, you know, comes after it and basically wrecks up the place. And before the start of the game, the, uh, oh, the Traveler, which is, you know, the, the space deity, has been, like, in hibernation for... It's unclear pro at least hundreds of years. Okay. Um, but, you know, it's kind of ambiguous, like, to what degree was the Traveler responsible for, like, bringing all this evil stuff to Earth. And, you know, in one of the more recent expansions, uh, you basically unlock the ability to use uh, dark side powers, in effect. And so it's like, is, you know, is the dark, you know, darkness really evil? And now in this expansion, uh, some of the villains have um, figured out how to use light powers. So I hope where the story is going is playing with some of that, uh, you know, ambiguity. Okay. Um, I don't know if it is or not. Um, it is kind of interesting that there's uh, four main enemy factions in Destiny. And uh, by this point in the storyline, you've kind of allied with at least two of them. Hmm. So again, with like the the what more... is this Warframe? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, with the with the more ambiguity, you know, these things that were these just like horrible enemies are like now just kind of chilling and uh, <laughs> in the zones and like helping you and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, it's especially funny, though, because the most recent ones to um, ally with you are the Cabal, which are basically these, like, space rhinos in power armor that are overtly themed on the Roman Empire. Okay. And so... At this storyline, they're very much doing the, like, oh, we don't trust each other, but, uh, but, you know, we have to work together, uh, to defeat a common enemy, and, like, oh, since you're temporarily our allies, here's, here's this technology that we are developing to obliterate you, but, you know, we'll, we'll let you have the prototype version so that we can defeat this common enemy. I'm like, no, those are just Romulans. 
that's like <laughs> at least 10 Star Trek episodes that were, were that. <laughs> well, you know, uh, standing on the shoulders of giants. Um, I, I think you're, I think uh, the best part so far, or I think the best acting at least so far is, um, oh, your, your little ghost, uh, that's, it was originally uh, Dinklage. I'm not sure who they got to replace him. I think they got Nolan North to do it. That that could be. Yeah. Uh, he he is just very very um, irate with with learning that you know now the bad guys have ghosts. <laughs> uh, and, and actually, like for a game for a incredibly stupid game that literally has space wizards. Uh, you know, manages to get some pathos from that. Huh. Uh, you know, which is fun. And, you know, this uh, whole thing, you're, this time around you're fighting the kind of Lovecraftian uh, uh, enemy faction, which means that uh, you get to see a lot of Eris Morn, who's my favorite character because she's basically just like, basically a space goth. Okay. Uh, just, you know, her, her, she is dressed all in, like, black robes. She constantly has these, like, black ear-like energy flowing down from her eyes, and she's, like, holding a ball of, like, whirling arcane force. Like, she's just... Straight up base goth that's all all her lines are just overwrought, you know, nihilistic, you know, pseudo philosophical like uh uh occult babble. Okay. And just is very much uh oh played up. Uh for the to give you an idea of kind of how they tend to play it, for one of for the Halloween event, you have to go around to all the major uh characters and trick or treat and they'll like give you candy and stuff huh. and then uh she gives you a box of raisins okay so she's just a just a, a consummate bummer yeah exactly exactly and and it is my favorite thing ever <laughs> so um honestly that's most of destiny it's you know it's still a very fun game um and it does seem like they're kind of getting their feet back under them. I do a little bit worry that I think they actually only have two good enemies. Uh, because this this is the exact same. Like, the, the boss of this game is the sister of the Taken King. Who was that? Was the expansion in uh, the original Destiny where Destiny finally got good? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think what what's really happening is just they only actually have like one faction that's actually compelling. Okay. So it's gonna be like Star Wars, and they just have a Death Star and everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like ah, oh, this worked before. We're, we're not gonna. Why take chances? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Between like Halo and this, it seems like uh, US has some really interesting strategies of giving people no additional content or taking away previous content. <laughs> like, yeah, uh, I think the the worst scenario I've heard is um, so I started playing just on the tail end of it being on Game Pass. Okay. Um, and they've since removed it from from game pass you can still buy it on um you know xbox pc or whatever mm -hmm. but it's not free but they do a weird thing you have cross saves but not cross expansions so if you uh. buy an expansion on like steam or you know playstation or something like that you can move your character over and you have all the loot but you don't actually have access to the um, expansion if I'm playing, say, like on Game Pass. Yeah. Hmm. So there were um, oh scenarios where it's like people people who say had ha owned all the expansions except for uh, uh, Witch Queen, mm -hmm. uh, bought Witch Queen on 
uh, on the Xbox store or whatever because all of the expansions except for Witch Queen were free and then it got pulled from the store and so now they don't have access to either the expansions on Xbox or all the expansions they bought when they owned it on Steam. So they've got to get it all again if it's even available to them. Exactly. Yeah. So basically, yeah, I'm I I have no idea like it seems really weird to me because it doesn't seem like they need to nickel and dime people. It it seem I would I would guess that Destiny would be in a middle place where it's good enough that you don't need to dip nickel and dime people and not good enough that people are going to stick around if you do. Yeah. Huh. But yeah, it sounds frustrating. I don't know that I would. Yeah. Uh... So we'll see right now. You know, I'm going to play through the expansion, you know, play it until I'm bored, just as kind of a dumb popcorn game and then, you know, make a decision. <laughs> Destiny 2. I don't know. I don't know that I have any more questions about that. Uh, do you ever see a Destiny 3 coming out or is Destiny 2 just going to be the forever game? Like, is this a League of Legends platform? Really hope it is. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I honestly, I really don't know because I I would be pretty upset if they did a Destiny 3. And what? I feel like they've just gone, you know, to, it's gone too, too long. I feel like just wiping everyone's progress and that sort of thing just i don't know seems kind of exploitative especially when like mm. uh oh uh warframe's been going since destiny one no gotcha i mean if i had to guess i think they probably will do that but i imagine from their perspective at, at some point they probably want to reset to try and get more people in but yeah yeah, I mean, that's probably better or easier than just making a actually uh, compelling experience. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, that sounds frustrating. Yeah. Oh. Did you have another one? Nope, that's all I got. Cool. Um, I've got one, too, so I'll do mine real quick. Is uh, it one or is it two? two. <laughs> I have one as well. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> never pass up an easy joke. <laughs> to, to, I, I did I did lay it up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that'll, that'll teach me. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, over this past weekend, uh, uh, on a Friday, I believe, I streamed a game called Ikai. Uh, this is a first-person horror game um, uh, that is set in feudal Japan. Uh, that is primarily drawing uh, its horror and its monsters and such from Japanese folklore uh, and specifically from yokai. You know, the Japanese demon monster uh, kind of deals. Some of them are tricksters. Some of them are tragic. Uh, all of them are fascinating. It's a, it's a, I, I endeavored to learn about them more as we uh, were playing um, uh, Sekiro. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been fun. Uh, you know, it was fun finding books, you know, cause I'm always down for a bestiary. I like a, I like a big reference book full of beasties, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I wish I could say that I was as enthusiastic. Uh, I wish I could say that the presence of yokai and their inherent interestingness was enough for this game, uh, to really make it for me. But yeah, I, 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 I necess I didn't really care for it. Uh, mm -hmm. I ultimately didn't have much invested in it. I just did a search, uh, for new horror games on steam, saw what was trending. Uh, uh it, it's spelled I K A I if you're uh, searching for it. Um, uh, and I was like, Oh, this looks pretty cool. There's some bizarre imagery in, uh, in that. Uh, so like the story and the setup is you're playing as a, uh, a shrine maiden. You're playing as a young, young woman taking care of the shrine. Uh, the priest of the shrine, um, your uncle uh, steps out and has been missing for a while, so you go after him, but it becomes clear that there is a demonic uh, presence. Uh, demons have kind of taken over the place, and so you have to get back to the shrine and um, progressively like resolve the issues and kind of uh, cleanse the taint of these different demons 
to uh, uh, yeah, I know. Sorry, <laughs> gotta but... be a better way to phrase that. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> you know, I can't. I, I thought I tried to think of a worse way to say it, and I couldn't. So I think I proved your point. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, so you could say you're going to, you know, remove the demon's taint, which just sounds painful. Let's just, <laughs> I mean, along with the rest of them, yeah. Uh, it's like I'm, <laughs> not like I'm some kind of weird butcher. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh so this plays out mostly as like a uh you know first person uh uh first person horror game there's not so much like pursuit as there is uh just kind of stuff that'll jump scare you uh and maybe yeah. you'll die if you messed I, up good I, I saw this for maybe like five minutes i jumped in on the stream and saw those things kept popping up in front of you for like jump scares it's yeah. like oh <laughs> that seems unnecessary <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty I, I i'm tolerant of jump scares you know like whatever uh water off a duck's back it's fine yeah. it's it's one of uh it is uh it, it is one of the many necessary colors in the um uh, in the uh let's say the palette uh that is used to create horror media right yeah you, know, you got mm-hmm. just to get, get you your wouldn't listen going. to techno without a bass drum right yeah um but if if a techno song was just drops then it would yeah. be. <laughs> then it would be dubstep. <laughs> well, I mean, no, d- d- dubstep. They've got the one big drop, but like, uh, no, <laughs> like if this one was just da 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 yeah, I want to. I want a song that's all drops. I want to know what this sounds like. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's that? There's uh oh, what's the thing? There's a sound that your brain interprets as constantly getting lower in pitch. Yeah, I've heard that before. I've seen that demonstrated. Uh, I don't know what it's called though. Yeah. Hmm. Huh. But uh, but yeah, uh, you know, you, and most of the time it's it's you walking around, uh, spooky or silly stuff happening. Uh, the fact that you are a shrine maiden uh, factors into this. So uh, you know, somebody who works at a shrine would uh, be in charge of making those amulets. You know, uh, writing the mm. kanji onto the piece of paper that would be attached on something to seal it or to protect it. Right. So they have this mechanic where you have to. Uh, write the seals onto these things and that involves drawing a um uh, a kanji character with your mouse uh which sounds neat right like okay I, i'm gonna draw this the level of precision in this though <laughs> just is... like japanese culture demands perfection <laughs> well yeah but somebody would be growing up their entire lives learning this and i am trying to uh draw this um you know with a mouse which I mean, I grew up in a certain time. I've driven a fair. I, I have drawn a fair number of uh, uh, stick figures in MS Paint, you know. <laughs> but like, if you if you if your um, you know, stroke ventures outside of the uh, uh, like the outline that you're supposed to fill in, you'll just restart. It'll say no, this won't work, and then you do it again. Uh, this initially oh, starts wow. like it's like the 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 way the game starts is you like making one of these for your uncle as he leaves. And then slowly over the course of the game, you're uh, doing it under duress. And if you fuck it up too many times, a monster will get you and you die. <laughs> Is there any form of this game that's on like a touch screen? Because I could see that making more sense if you're just brushing with your finger. But trying to do that with a mouse sounds awful. I didn't see if it was available on mobile at all. Uh, it could yeah, be. I was Good. super impressed with uh, your tolerance of this. I... I... I think I literally just watched the last um the last puzzle in the game mm-hmm. and I I definitely would have quit halfway through. There's one puzzle toward the end that would not be out of place in Riven. Um or any of like you know just any of the harder missed games like uh and the other stuff like it's a combination of just just really blatant dumb just follow the directions kind of stuff uh, uh then it gets more frustrating with like oh you have to go and search for this object so do like a pixel hunt kind of thing in this 3d environment which i hate uh because i don't like collectathons i don't like uh searching for stuff because i always get stuck and i always feel just angry and annoyed by it um yeah and then you get this one last puzzle you're talking about the one that was on the wall yep 
Yeah, yeah. And I, I like what's frustrating is I had the right answer. I figured out the logic of the line segments that wanted me to do, wanted me to draw. I went to put and I and I put it in on my own, and it said no, that won't work. And then it went over, and then it went over again. Finally, I mean, I probably sat there looking at this thing for like twenty five minutes trying to get this thing worked out. And I went to YouTube and and looked it up, and I saw like, wait a minute, I. I did that. I did that ten minutes ago. That exact same pattern. Like I follow the logic of which lines cancel each other out and stuff, and I put this in. And just no, you just didn't do it right. Uh, but the problem is that was a problem of execution and not a problem of my thinking. It made Ugh. me think that I didn't find the right pattern, so I overthought it and I started doing other stuff. Which um, not good. Not good puzzle design. I don't think actually. Yeah. So when. When I watched uh, watch you doing the um, the basically the the kanji stuff, mm -hmm. I almost wondered if it was trying to do there's like correct st stroke order in um yes uh, yeah. in Chinese or you know Japanese, yeah. and I I had wondered if it's like trying to get you to do that. That's how non-intuitive it's being like no nah, that's not good enough do it again yeah <laughs> no as far as i could tell the stroke order didn't matter people in the chat were joking about get you know get your stroke order right because you know that large number and we got we got we got dorks in the audience probably studied kanji for fun you know no mm -hmm. no 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 shame in that but they were they were making jokes about it i had never studied you know any of that uh, so I, I had no idea. I was like, okay, it was just like, yeah, you always go down and you go right. And so I, I tried that in places where I was failing and it's just, no, no, you literally just have to be precise when you just draw the outline itself, which doesn't, um, actually put you in a position to write good kanji. What it does mm -hmm. is I'm not going to do like a full stroke to do like the crossbar on this particular glyph. I'm not going to do, you know, a full, a full downstroke on this. Instead, I'm going to do a bunch of like little strokes to kind of piecemeal this together because mm -hmm. if it's the option of messing up and dying or going very slow, <laughs> I'm going to do the safest thing possible because again, I'm drawing with a fucking gaming mouse. Mm -hmm. Cool. Do you do you think this was controversial enough to call it kanji gate? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we are not awful. <laughs> okay, kanji gate's very good. <laughs> oh man. Uh, it's, uh, things aren't that fucked. Uh, yeah, I would not I would not um I I would not recommend people pe people play this unless they've got a real even then i don't know there there are better there are better horror games about they, they, that deal more with like uh yokai and uh uh like feudal japanese stuff yeah i just did uh, man it was it was a real bummer because again it looked neat there's this the, the this the phenomenon that we're running into or i've run into as i've as i have run out of horror <laughs> games that i'm familiar with which is like there are lots of games that look amazing in um screenshot and in video think that in sound mm -hmm. mind game that i played right like all of the marketing around it made it look good but i just kind of got catfished into ah, man yeah no it's just uh, this is this is not good and my my hopes were high um yeah and i this, think that's that's what they call the money shot right because that's how they get your money I mean, it's just marketing, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm describing that like it's a new, like it's a new phenomenon. Of course yeah. they want to put their, <laughs> they, they want to put their best foot forward. I get that, you know, marketing is a, is a discipline and it, and it's, and it's hard. Uh, but, uh, well, I just, I, I've been burned by it a couple of times and it makes me, uh, it just makes me want to play a simulator game. <laughs> Yeah, it, there's also an increasing mentality uh, for better or for worse of like, hey, I'll, I'll build enough of this to make it look good and and kind of put it out there knowing that I can patch it. And if it gets traction, then I'll, you know, then I'll smooth off the, yeah. the rough edges. Um, that's that's, you know, obviously not everyone, but that no. that, uh, that be, that's kind of more and more normalized uh, with just the the ability to patch and update and do early access being so much more common. Mm -hmm. yeah so that's a bummer i wanted to like it more uh because you know just it's it's a little bit unusual game or you know a game that is a pretty faithful representation of different like yokai uh kind of stuff down to like the collectibles are really cool drawings of the different monsters uh, along with like brief little descriptions of them like it's its own little bestiary kind of thing 
I don't know. I, I think if I want that, I'm just going to open up the several books about this topic that I happen to own. <laughs> Have you considered uh, Neo 2? Um, I ha- I've considered it. I picked it up when it was on a really deep sale. I got it for like 10 bucks uh, on Ooh. PS4, but uh, probably not for a stream because that is incredibly long. But yeah. Guys, uh, I, I'm embarrassed uh, to admit how long it took me to realize there was a difference between Neo games and the Nier games. Uh, I mean, it's not that much different. <laughs> <laughs> those those two were intertwined in my mind for a long time. I mean, in both games, you're playing a uh, a mute ninja. <laughs> uh, and both of them are action RPGs. And if you're just hearing them and not seeing, if you're just hearing about them and not seeing them written, then it would. Yeah, no, I can. I I don't think that there's. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any shame in that. Well, I mean, may, maybe shame, but. <laughs> Oh, so that's that's all that I got is uh, is Ikai. Uh, blah. Womp womp. Womp womp indeed. Since you womped womp, Dennis, what you got? Yeah, <laughs> I, got, I got two new games I've been checking out. Okay. Um, so both of these are kind of smaller games, found them on Game Pass and, and have been enjoying them. Uh, the first one is called Yes, Your Grace. Uh, that's which a is... management sim, right? It is. It is. So, you know, you, you are playing the role of a, a king running a kingdom um, and you're, you're kind of set up early on that your kingdom is kind of not not nearly as well off as your neighbors. Um, and you are trying to run day to day operations um, of the kingdom and prepare for several large kind of story events, um, not through, you know, placing workers or, or building, you know, farms or anything like that. You just um, sit in your throne, th- throne room uh, and people bring you, you know, problems and you you give an answer like you someone will say hey i i want to build an inn over in this area but i need you know this amount of resources to do it i think it's gonna be a great investment and you can say you know here's the gold or i'll give you half that or like get out of here you crazy mm-hmm. kid um the event you're preparing for the yarg yeah <laughs> Uh, no, not quite. Although I'm, I'm early in the game, so maybe it could be, <laughs> um, the, the main, the main story driver of the game is, you know, you, so, it, you know, the one part of the game is kind of sitting in your throne room and just taking caller after caller, uh, petitioner. I think it calls them after petitioner, um, who, who wants things from you or is making promises or, or what have you. There's all sorts of characters that traipse through and you've kind of got to use your judgment, um, to to suss out you know the the game tells you like some people might have ulterior motives or or not might not be sincere and it's your job to kind of um make a call um as the king um so it's probably probably one of the games that's more faithful to the role of a king um that that i've seen out there Mm -hmm. um the other side of the game is is you know after each long day of, of taking petitioners, you can get up and walk around your castle and there will all be all these different interactions based on who you talked to that day uh, and the decisions that you made uh, will kind of play out. Um, mm-hmm. Specifically, they'll play out among your family because you have a, a wife and three daughters um, and a lot of the drama and story in the game is, is around them. And, you know, they're all very unique characters and, and have their own motivations uh, et cetera. And so in addition to trying to manage the kingdom, you're also trying to kind of manage the relationship with your family. Yeah. Um, very, very simple pixel art style. Um, uh, and, and, uh, you know, not, not a lot required visually to this game to, to, to make the premise work. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, there's, there's enough there to be evocative. Um, and the, the choices, uh, I I've kind of been trained by this kind of game to be incredibly paranoid. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so, you know, for example, the, you, um, you have an army, but then you also have a general and, you know, some, some problems can be solved by sending army. Some you need a general and the very first, um, day of petitioners, you know, someone comes up and is like, Hey, we've had, you know, an, an, an attack. We need some help with, you know, it, it was, put up to be like a serious problem, but, but not a gigantic problem. Uh, and I had the option, um, to send the general and I'm like, Nope, this is the first day. It, it was like for two weeks he was going to be gone. I was like, I guarantee you, I need my generals. <laughs> I, please. I will need this dude. Like nothing has gone wrong yet. I'm just telling you metagame wise, I'm going to need this dude, uh, before he, he would be back. 
Uh, and sure enough, that was the case. So, yeah. um, papers, please has taught me well, <laughs> uh, do, do not upgrade your apartment. Um, you know, another one, this is the, the first kind of major, um, thrust of the story is, uh, your oldest daughter, uh, has just hit marrying age and, um, you apparently way, way far back in your past promised that your first future child would be married off to this barbarian Lord. Uh, and I don't have the full story around exactly what the arrangement oh, that was. And, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> you would think, um, but they, he's painted to be kind of a dick, um, especially because he is kind of rampaging his way towards your kingdom um, to, to take what is his or what's been promised him uh, by you, I might mm -hmm. note. Right. right. Uh, and so you're trying to figure out what to do um, about that. Um, so the one of the solutions or the one that I went with um, was basically arranged marriage um, to, you know, uh, an ally you know, family um, and and like, hey, if she's if she's taken and this ally has actually a super huge army, the barbarian can't stand against. But this entire time, like it's getting closer and closer to to the wedding date. And I'm like, hey, this all seems to be working, but like there's no way this can go through. Like this is going to be a really short game <laughs> if this goes through. Uh, and, and sure enough, I, I won't spoil exactly what happens, but, um, you know, there there are interruptions. And so the all, you know, all the money that I spent on wedding preparations was was put to waste. Um, <laughs> and yeah, so it, it's like, oh, go ahead. I was going to ask, can you, can you simply execute the daughter? Be like, no one gets her? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Solomon, <King> Solomon <laughs> solution. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, if that option is there, I did not find the dialogue tree that led to it. Um, it's also, it, it's, it's a bit interesting because, um, you know, the drama centers around basically you choosing who your daughter is going to marry. And that by modern sensibilities doesn't make sense. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so you feel this tension of like wanting to choose the dialogue option that, that lines up best with a progressive, um, mentality, uh, versus, you know, kind of just inhabiting the world and the character and being like, okay, assuming that we're not going to get to 2022 levels of feminism, what is the best option here? Yeah. Um, so there's, there's the baddies. How do we be the least baddies? Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so just like what, what, what vibe is this game on as far as, 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 as far as expecting me to role play this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a bit of cognitive cognitive dissonance there, but something I really like is that no matter what you choose, or at least, at least everything that I have chosen, um, is then kind of played out in um, kind of the best faith way possible. Uh, I never liked when I played Mass Effect or, or other similar like you know moral choice dialogue games um, that there was kind of just the asshole option, um, and oftentimes it was you know the the character would come off as a lot more aggressive or a lot more flippant or, or meaner than I would want it to be. And it's like, well, there's, there's good reasons why I might choose this option other than just, I'm playing the, the, you know, the evil run through the, I forget, was it Paragon or Renegade, the Renegade run through. Yeah. Um, and, and so, you know, that it always felt like, you know, the, the game wasn't truly, uh, articulating why I would get to that. Um, yes, your grace, excuse me. Yes, your grace, um, really does a good job that, you know, even when you're choosing an option that, that kind of is the mean one or the harsh one, um, it's articulated in a way that I could look at and be like, yeah, that's, that's the reasoning that brought me there. Like, yeah, that's justifiable. Um, yeah. The, yeah. The King kind of articulates well, why the heart behind why he's doing what he's doing. Mm -hmm. You have a example of that? Um, yeah, so there's, there's one, um, there's a guy in your prison, in your, in your dungeon cell. Um, he's there for, um, essentially stealing beer. Um, and the part of your, part of your prison collapses. The, the roof falls in basically on the cell next to his. Um, and, and, uh, he, uh, he's like, Oh, this is a sign. Like that could have been me. I'm, I, I'm, I'm like it's something like you know. I've, I've, I've seen the light. This is, this is a revelation for me. I'm going to dedicate my life to good. Let me out of here so I can go, you know, live my true calling that I've realized from this near death experience. Um, and and there's basically like a, uh, you know, a 
yeah, okay, cool option. And then a, you're full of shit option. <laughs> uh, and that negative option is not the King being like, I, I think that the literal, the text choice was, you know, um, you're getting what you deserved or something like that. Um, and, but the, the, you know, what the dialogue that actually plays out is more like, I think you need a little more time to, to consider your deeds yeah. uh, or something like that. Like it, it's, it's very diplomatic. It's kingly as it were. Yeah. Um, and the nice thing was then I came back to that guy, same guy a couple days later. Um, and was, whereas before he had lied to me about why he was in, uh, he kind of was very forthright about what he did and acknowledged it was wrong. Whereas before his focus was on like this, you know, this, uh, I, I've, I've changed, you know, I'm, I'm, I've, I've just got a burst of inspiration. You need to let me out. Mm -hmm. He seemed a lot more sincere the, the second time around, yeah. uh, and then the dialogue choice to release him. Uh, I also had put a dangerous prisoner in the cell next to him. Um, so the choice to release him was a lot more, uh, um, humane. Uh, palatable yeah yeah humane and palatable uh just because it felt like okay this guy stewed for for a couple days he's he's probably learned his lesson yeah um but yeah so so um it is kind of this like you said it's a it's a management game um but it also feels a little bit like a dating sim um you know family family management sim whatever you want to call that uh and and it's a it's a blend of those two I mean, hmm. let's be honest. What what is dating but management? Expectation <laughs> management. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, this sounds this sounds like a, a we used to call it a coal nip, like catnip, uh, but uh, started doing uh, calling it coal cane. Uh, this sounds like <laughs> I, I didn't just make that up. A listener made it up. Um, no, no, I, I hear. You. No, it's um yeah. That sounds it sounds like a, like classic uh, coal cane. Uh, to me, it it sounds really good. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, uh, jump on in. The water's fine, uh, <laughs> but you must refer to it using the correct inflection, which is "Yes, Your Grace." Yes, Your Grace. <laughs> oh. I like how because this is this was like a mechanic in Dragon Age Inquisition, where you like listen to somebody's story and make a decision. But I mm -hmm. like that they just distilled that into an entire game because that was probably one of the better parts of Dragon Age Inquisition. It, it, this feels like they are taking like this is a slightly souped up and more complex um, reigns. Uh, mm -hmm. th 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 those are real fun mobile games that are mm -hmm. a bit of a similar kind of thing. You're making decisions as a king um, and you're doing like a, if you if you fail, you're you're killed and then you then then your successor picks up and you, you just kind of do it again. They're good. games. Oh, funny. Yeah. Um, but they're really simple. Right. Um, you're mm -hmm. managing four meters uh, and like the charm is in the writing and the art and stuff like that. Like it's more complex than that. But this is not the full Crusader Kings you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i yeah as a as a happy medium i'm happy that something exists that is roughly in that space that is um f you know kind of kind of filling that spot yeah yeah it's it's a nice light game i it, it is another one that i can play on my phone through cloud streaming um and it's like it's like just enough um uh, attention requiring to to play before you fall asleep in bed so nice good times yeah not bad at all mm-hmm uh, so the other game, if there's no more questions on Yes, Your Grace. Yes, Your Grace. No. Uh, the other game I've been playing is called Into the Pit. Into the Pit. Is this the pinball yeah. game? Or no, that's the creature no, of the No, this is... Shooter, right? It is. It is a Doom-like shooter. Into the um, Pit. Yeah. And I, I, like, I, I don't know what got me to click on this. I guess the thumbnail was just attractive or something like that. But I, I, I saw it and I was like, what's that? Um, decided to try it. And it is, I, I hesitate to call it a shooter because you don't have guns. You have um, hands. Yes. Uh, so the, the setting is it's like, like uh, it's like Hexen. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're, so you're shooting spells out of your hands. Um, but Hand. the, uh, hams. <laughs> Bees. <laughs> Bees. Did you play it? Do you know what they are? If I say they were hams, they were hams. Um, yeah. So, so the the setting is kind of like a um, I don't know uh, Victorian era esque village um, that is apparently set up around a a portal into the de demonic realms. Um, and the village sprang up because it's a, you know, the, that portal is a great, great place to go get resources. 
Okay. Um, and so it's just this whole commerce, you know, has, has built up around it. Apparently everyone just knows this and is cool with it. Like it wasn't, wasn't a big deal. It was just like, Oh yeah, we got a, we got a help portal for our no, if the uh, resources. Been, if the portal's always yeah. been there then. Very mm-hmm. much is a doom like. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So you, you know, you are on the trail of your cousin who is in the village on the trail of the alderman of the village who apparently delved too deep and greedily in this hell portal. Um, and now, you know, is, is lost and something weird is going on and, and, you know, villagers are disappearing. People are scared. So you dive into the hell portal to find villagers, your cousin and the alderman eventually. Um, and that, that sets up your kind of classic run based roguelike structure. Um, you know, while you're in the portal, you get magical powers, uh, not so on the outside, um, and so when you die in the portal, you're kind of ejected out and you, you try again, trying to get deeper, uh, into the pit. Hey, every yeah. time, <laughs> um, yeah, but, but what makes it stand out? Cause we, we talked a couple of weeks ago about like, you can't just have a roguelike anymore. It's like that, that's, you know, um, that framing needs something really cool. Um, what that is for into the pit is that it, it plays a lot like doom just in terms of the momentum and, um, you know, quick twitchy shooting, uh, is really, really satisfying. Um, and is clearly modeled off of doom to the point that all the enemies in the, the first area have distinct resemblances to different enemies, uh, from the doom games. You get a, you get a caco demon up there. Mm -hmm, mm Mm-hmm. So it's, it's just like, it's one of those games that feels good to play. And when you're hopping around through the air and, and snapping off shots and um, you know, the, the doom style of FPS is when we're just, you, you never want to stop moving, right? You're yeah. always um, cause the second you stop moving, they're on you, you, you know, you take damage, you die. Uh, this plays really, really well like that. Um, and that, that makes for a really, really, uh, compelling reason to feel like, oh, I just, you know, I just feel like playing doom for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, you can, you can go and play into the pit. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, a, a lot of fun in that it's just, it's scratching that itch of a, a really snappy FPS. Um, what I will say though, is the visual design of this is, is really, really jarring to me. It looks pronounced. The ne- yeah. like the, the, the neon seems super attractive in visuals. I could see it being very confusing. Yeah, and I think it, it is. You know the, that that um, colorfulness because there's a lot of neon, like you said, is is welcome in a game that could easily be kind of you know shades of brown. Mm-hmm. Um, so that you know that that's a good choice. But whoever whoever did the filter on this game, like just grab the contrast slider and the shadows slider and drug them all the way to the right. Um, like, like every second of this game looks like when you, when you look at a screen tilted too far flat and you kind of get like the inverse color. Yeah. Uh, weirdness going on like that. That's what this game looks like all the time. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and I went in and I fiddled that, you know, they got a bunch of um, check boxes for, for what filters are on versus off and, and all that. And I, I fiddled with that a bit and I just couldn't find one that, that didn't feel that way. Yeah. Um, but that, that, yeah, it just black and white mode. <laughs> yeah. I, I think what they were trying to do is to get the pixely effect of doom, um, layered onto a game that was kind of built in a, in a more sophisticated 3d, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but the way that they got there just, just adds so much, um, yeah, just garishness to it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, that, that it's, it's not very palatable. So, um, you know, especially when things start moving, uh, getting hectic in combat, I think it can be a bit of a detriment as well. Nothing, nothing like that's fatal. Like, uh, it's, it's it never quite gets beyond just being frustrating. So, you know, I'll, I'll still play it. Um, but yeah, I, I would have loved to see this maybe get a different, different, uh, brushstroke over top of it as it were. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so, you know, standard roguelike fare where, you know, you, you, you drop into the first area, you choose a, a spell for your left hand, a spell for your right hand, and a, and a kind of defensive aura um, from, a, from a randomly generated list each time. Uh, and then each floor of the pit or each level of the pit has um, 
four sides with two options on each side and you choose one of the two options for each side uh and have to complete an area for that option before diving lower okay um and yeah so you know it it uh really what you're there for is is the the moment to moment um which is funny to say in a roguelike because usually those are so um oriented around grinding out the uh the kind of power uh, what do you want to call it the power not creep but but growth yeah, to, yeah. to be able to finish the game. Um, it feels very slow in this one. So for example, you know, I, to start with, none of the shops are open at the village level cause everyone's hidden away. Um, and you need, I, I think it's up to 15 villagers to open all the shops, hmm. uh, to, to find in the pit. And so far I've found two. Okay. So that, you know, that, that is, a, is going to be a very slow and maybe, you know, maybe as I get further in, they will appear with more frequency, but, um, yeah, it seems, it seems very content to just kind of drip out new systems in the game pretty slowly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm happy that they emphasize the, um, doom side over the mm -hmm. rogue, rogue like progression side. Cause I think that, yeah. that's the more important thing. Like it needs to feel good to play. It needs to feel good in your hands. Especially mm -hmm. if it's going to yeah. be uh, demanding difficulty wise at all. Yes, uh, and and uh, they they nailed that part. I think I think they did uh, did a really good job. Uh, I don't I don't know yet that they've really done anything to um, you know twist away from Doom's model or or to uh, do something super unique. But mm -hmm. but emulating Doom well is uh, is fun in and of itself. It's a good place to start. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, that's into the pit. I've I've beaten the first boss. So the the way you kind of start a run is you choose a keystone, which picks which area you're going to go into, and then you choose several support stones uh, as well to to like use in the ritual that give you different bonuses. Um, and so I, I beat the first keystone area uh, and unlocked two more. Um, so I'm early in the game, uh, but it's been fun to play. And uh, yeah, those are the those are the two games I've been playing this week. Very cool. I don't have any any more questions about it. Uh, ben, how about you? All right, yeah, I'll round this out. I just got two small ones. Uh, the first one I got is a game called Bit Buddy, or another way that it's phrased is "Claim Your Free Bit Buddy Today." Bit Buddy trademarked. It's a <laughs> game by uh, Daniel Mullins. Yeah, that's his name. Oh, the guy yeah. didn't. Pony inscription Island inscription guy okay yeah pony island and all that uh it's free it's on itch uh i just somehow stumbled upon it uh over the week and thought i would try it out uh premise of it it's a very short game so it's not like a huge game or anything like that but i definitely recommend it uh but the premise of it is is it's after you download and start it up you have a bit buddy that you can talk to which is like a tamagotchi like thing that gets auto-generated um, but they set the stakes right off the bat. They say, hey, if you close this game uh, or if like you turn off your computer or anything, I die permanently. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, I, and I really don't want to die. So please don't do that. Um, and, and then it kind of goes from there. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it, it has a very similar feel to his other games where mm -hmm. it's very playful with the mechanics that it has to offer. Uh, and it's kind of fun to explore. Um, and, uh, there is a way that you can save him that, uh, online, but it involves going down to like, it's like, uh, you have to like fuck with your computer and like go to like the, <laughs> like the kernel level to change something that got written there. So that like, uh, it, it's something very like kind of in depth like that, but anyway, it it's sounds uh, very Dar Daniel Mullinsy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, it's a small little game. It's worth checking out. I don't want to say too much about it because most of the, uh, enjoyment of the game is like the surprise of what happens and the mm -hmm. things that it offers. So, um, yeah, anyway, it's just if you look for Bit Buddy, you should be able to find it. Uh, but it's, it's definitely worth a playthrough. Um, so looking, looking at screenshots, apparently you can go back in and view your dead Bit Buddy, um, after, after you've closed the game. So, yeah, without doing any hacks, if you fail and your Bit Buddy dies. He is permanently dead. He or she is permanently dead. <laughs> You've got so it. So every all. time you launch it up, you're just <laughs> greeted with the corpse of something that you failed. Unless you change um, something in your registry, probably. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Um, 
Anyway, it's uh, it's worth checking out. It's a fun little, like, maybe five, 15 minute game. It's not too long. Anyway. Mm-hmm. I mean, Other- forever if you're dedicated to keeping your BitBuddy alive. That could be true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, the other game I got is a new game. It's an indie game. It's called Strange Horticulture. Um, it's only it's like under a year old. Um, it's an indie game. It's made by like two developers. Uh, kind of the pitch of it is a similar storyline to like Stardew Valley, except you're taking over a gardening store from a relative who passed on, um, and so you're just trying to kind of upkeep it. The kind of uh, hook of the game is that it's uh, Lovecraftian, like it has Lovecraftian undertones in the narrative. So, like as like customers come and visit you, you know, some of them like sound as if they're a part of a cult and they're making kind of strange requests for different plants that might oh, do terrible things. They're looking for hmm. reagents. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the narrative hook's actually pretty good. Uh, this, I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know how far through the game I am. I, I'm guessing like maybe like halfway through the game or so. Um, I kind of, I've only played it for like three hours, but I think I'm like kind of done with it at this point. Um, the main mechanic is like you have a book that describes a bunch of plants and you have a bunch of plants in your plant shop. And so typically you're just trying to help out customers by them saying like, hey, I'm looking for a plant that smells good or something like that. And you can go through the description of the book and be like, oh, okay, you know, like these two smell good. They both have like these kind of sketches of what they could be. This looks closer to this one. So I'm going to guess that this is your plant and like give that to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're right, you know, then you're right and they go away happy. If you're wrong, uh, you kind of get a penalty. It's like a three strikes you're out. And then like the day is over. And like, I think the, the lore reason is like, you start to go like crazy after hmm. three, getting three wrong. So you have to like call it a day. Okay. Um, uh, so, and that's like the, that's like the main mechanic of the game. The other like kind of sub mechanic is uh, they have like a world map that you can look at. And every so often you can choose to explore a square on this map. And just guessing there's probably like, maybe like 300 squares on this or something. It's something like maybe 200. It's like, it's like 20, two by 10 or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and so you can go there to try and uh, like new events might happen, or you can go looking for plants there. Um, you can get clues where it's like, Oh, so-and-so found a plant by the river around here. And so you can go to the map and try and explore those areas and try and find what they're talking about. And that's kind of a way to like build your collection of plants up even more and more. Yeah. Um, so most of that sounds like pretty good uh, game design wise. I think the, the part where it starts to get a hitch is uh, you start getting requests from customers about plants that you have, don't necessarily have. Um, You may or may not have like solved the puzzle to get it at that point, but you're not guaranteed to have it. And it's really hard to tell, like, should I just like, there's not an option to like turn them away and be like, Hey, come back later. So like you're kind of stuck in the state where you need to either fail and restart the day Mm. or you need to like, start doing like other tasks that you haven't gotten to yet or trying to explore them to try and see if you get something that that does fit what their description is and that's kind of where like the frustration comes into play and that's kind of like what turned me off from the game a little bit yeah. um and so like because it eventually got to a certain number of points where it's like i would try and guess ones that would, that would fit the closest and then if i didn't get it i'd have to go to a wiki and look and be like oh okay i haven't gotten this plant yet okay yeah. here's how you get it okay, yeah, I'll go back and do that and then do that. And after that happened, like maybe like three or four times, I was kind of off it. Yeah. Um, but there's definitely like potential in this game. Like the lore is pretty good and the writing is like pretty good. Um, or at least it creates like intrigue. It does a good job of, of like uh, kind of putting different like character archetypes there that you start to like care about. Um, and so like that, I think that's all like handled in a pretty good way. Um, I, I know it's like just a two person development team. So I know it's like a, you know, it's not like a huge, uh, develop, it's not like a giant company making this game or anything. So I know there's like kind of limitations there. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Interesting game. I think they're maybe like strange horticultural two, if they make it might like polish mm-hmm. some of these edges off or something. Um, yeah. But yeah, overall, it's just okay. So kind of buyer beware, I guess. The fact that but, it comes uh, down to just like, yeah, this is this is a game about reference. And then, okay, well, it's requiring me to make such <laughs> such uh, uh, perfect decisions that I that I too have to go and reference something outside the game to make it huh. work. 
Uh, that sounds. <laughs> Is there un- a wiki for this wiki? That sounds unsatisfying. Yeah. 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 So uh, you know, it's not something like yeah. It's just some like rough edges that mm-hmm. probably need to be hammered out a little bit better. But but yeah. But I mean, definitely like good ideas are here. Um, and I like the kind of crossover between like a board game and a video game that this kind of is. Cause it, yeah. it, a lot of the things are very like tactile. Um, they give you different tools. They give you like labels and magnifying glasses. So like if it kind of describes something more like specific about a flower, you can kind of go in and like look around. Um, and like, like for example, one of them will talk about like the petals are made of like smaller petals and stuff like that. So like sometimes you'll use these tools to try and, you know, like, figure things out and you know some of them will make you feel smart and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um and then essentially you just label all the ones that you've discovered and so those never come up again so it's like once you solve one puzzle with them they're pretty much done oh no um (laughs) and so you just stick them over on the far left of your shelf um and then there was there was one interesting choice that came up where it was like somebody it was like they had like an upset stomach or something or were looking for a plant and you could give them one of two where it's like one would like help them out, but they were kind of like being an asshole. You have a pet cat in this game. Okay. You're being an asshole to your cat. So the other option was one that just like makes them throw up even more. It's oh, yeah, like, they, like, oh, they got to go one here. They got to go. If you give them poison, it'll cure their upset stomach. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Horticulture lawyer is the next uh, <laughs> installment of the franchise. But uh, but yeah, I like the uniqueness of this game though. I thought it was like too like I love Lovecraft stuff if it's done well. Um, and like being like a botanist or whatever is kind of like a interesting like uh type of game that I hadn't seen before. So yeah, it's a good I, angle. Yeah, I appreciate those choices at least. So mm-hmm. yeah, nice. That's all I got. Uh, or a brief Dark Souls update. Uh, I'm still running around with a giant sword. I got the giant's armor. Uh, I broke my sword on a worm, so I felt really sad, so I quit, and I haven't picked it back <laughs> up again. You can, you can repair I, it. You just gotta yeah, take I it know, <laughs> I know, but I gotta like fast travel, and I can't get back. And yeah. um, and I also I also made it so that Solaire will have a happy ending. Good. So I haven't I haven't gotten to see him there yet, but uh, <laughs> I've ins- I've ensured that part at least. So I'm happy about that. Yeah, it's um, it's funny how much work you have to do to make that happen. But it's worth it because Solaire is totally good. worth it's it. Solid. <laughs> I love how he's like so universally loved in the game, like because the game, like it, I guess you know, it's so, such a dark game, and everyone's so morose or assholey that like mm-hmm. the one person who's nice, you're like, yeah, this guy's amazing. Yeah, no, I can't. I you know I can't let something bad happen to him. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, all right. That's all I got. Cool. Multiplayer. Now it is time for the multiplayer, where normally we ask you a question and you answer it, but this time we're doing a free play. We're turning it around. Thank you, Dennis, for uh, for putting this one up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, free play is just uh, our usual Q&A uh, kind of deal. It's what uh, it's not usual for us, but it's the usual podcast Q&A. Uh, let's start with, uh, with Jeremy, uh, who says, uh, what video game made you rage quit and never go back and why? Uh, and then in parentheses, they say table flipping demon edition. And also they say, Ben, you should play the Dark Souls DLC. He wants to hear you talk about Artorias. Mm-hmm. Uh, the DLC is really good. You should, uh, when you're in your uh, playthrough here, you should go check it out. It's required, okay. Ben. It's assignment play now. Oh, my God. Uh, is that the only DLC for the first one? Or is there another one? On yeah, that's that? the only DLC. They, they, they were, okay. It's more like an expansion uh, kind of thing. It's very substantial. but Okay. All right. yeah. And very good. Yeah, it's some of the best content in the game, in the series, oh, really. So, yeah. is it uh, is it better to tackle with a mage or a person with a giant sword? You should be able to handle it with a giant sword. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, you know, or like rage quit and never go back. Uh, that's that, that that's tough because so many of my games that I play are either for streams or for assignments, so I can't really do that i guess most recently it was that uh it was that uh oh gosh uh in sound mind game it was just yeah this is just not very Ooh. well put together uh mm-hmm. you know could like i i i wouldn't call that a rage well yeah i was pretty mad that was, was a rage pretty, quit yeah, yeah I, was, I was pretty mad <laughs> like you can rage quit for content yeah no so yeah i did rage quit that and i think that i rage quit it for cause so mm-hmm. we're good <laughs> that's my answer i want to hear others I so for mine the one that I do remember is Darkest Dungeon. Not that I like I just haven't gone back to it. Not that I like 
I would play it again, but I one of my level six characters died. One or two of them died when I tried oh, to go into the yeah. darkest dungeon. So Ooh. I'm like, well, <laughs> think think we're done here for the time being. <laughs> Uh, not, yeah, now you know that's not okay. pe- people are people are going to be writing in with like oh all you have to do is upgrade your caravan <laughs> blah 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 yeah I churned through a lot of people to get those level six people so. <laughs> many many we lost many good souls <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, uh, for me I, the one that comes to mind is the Force Unleashed oh uh, from yeah. way back in the day there was yeah. a boss fight where the climactic moment is you're supposed to use the force to pull a star destroyer out of the sky everybody knows that yeah uh, yeah which which sounds cool as shit um but the way you needed to do it was basically to like pull the analog sticks at just the right angle mm-hmm. and like you know feel the force for like how, what that angle was um and there was just not nearly enough feedback to know you were doing it right and um there was also like tie fighters that would fly by and shoot at you to to interrupt you way too frequently and i i got to a point where i i wasn't taking damage i just couldn't do the thing to finish the boss fight and spent probably a half hour trying to pull this damn star destroyer out of the sky with nothing else interesting happening like i wasn't in danger as long as i stopped doing it when the tie fighters came by Mm -hmm. um and and i couldn't figure out the way to actually finish doing it uh and so that was my like fuck this game moment and uh and never finished it um also kind of warned me off of uh star wars games to the point that i was i uh, the fallen order was the the first one i've played since yeah Eh, you didn't miss too much. <laughs> <laughs> well, they just didn't make very many of them in that in the yeah, between there, those. It was kind of a dearth. Yeah. Huh. It's like if you hit Outcast, Coder, and then jump to uh Fallen Order, I think you're good. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh David, how about you? Um I think mine's a pretty easy one, uh Sandley Parable. God damn it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, you're just trying to get the achievement, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I just felt like the game wasn't respectful of my time. Okay. Like I I don't know, I just got uh tired of the dumb tricks. I got gotcha. you. This wasn't for you. Walk away. <laughs> I'm very surprised you hold this opinion, David. This really came <laughs> yeah. out of the blue, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's uh sometimes she's just got to be honest. <laughs> uh Greg writes so many games have bad or disappointing endings. Uh, what's one of your favorite video game endings? Uh, I've always loved the ending to Final Fantasy VIII. By the way, I love the pick being used. I really enjoyed 1 versus 100 and even made the 100 once uh, and got a free digital copy of the newest Street Fighter game. I was really bummed when it ended. Uh, he's talking about uh, the for the post, you used uh, 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 an image from the 1 versus 100 game. That was like an Xbox, yeah. Xbox Arcade multiplayer trivia game. That was fun. Yeah cool idea ahead of its time like i'm Mm -hmm. I'm sure things like that will come back around as everyone has a gaming console in their living room but yeah we'll see um so uh favorite ending in a video game this will be tough to do without uh without spoiling it but oh that's fair yeah i mean some any any one of the games that are kind of meant to be played once through in just a couple sessions like journey is is a really big one that comes to mind yeah like I remember just sitting after that and being like, "Oh, that's that hits the spot." Mm-hmm. I mean, it, ending is is pretty difficult, but like, let's say like everything from when you get to the final island to the to credits in uh, in Disco Elysium, mm-hmm. like mm. fi- final final encounter to you know when when you're not playing anymore. Uh, that's all. That's all really good and affecting stuff. That's a tough one. I think probably uh, the ending of Max Payne 2 I okay. think is excellent. Mm. Um, it really does, I think, a good job and is one of the few games I've played that does this of kind of having a bittersweet ending. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and, you know, kind of being, being a dark ending that I would argue is ultimately optimistic, uh, which is one of the reasons I have such a chip on my shoulder for uh, about Max Payne 3, because they basically ignore the ending. Right. Um, the, the other one I really like is the, uh, the ending to Fear, 
Uh, okay. The kind of the the last uh, you know jump scare they kind of pull off there, I think, is just excellent. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, ben, how about you? I think I have like a handful of some uh, like Portal Two, Bioshock Infinite, Inside. I think are kind of like three way tied for all like when you finish the game, you're like, holy shit. I, yeah. That was, I didn't know a game could do that sort of thing. So I have two cats fighting right, right next to my feet. Sorry. I'm distracted. <laughs> Who's winning. Uh, <laughs> they, 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 they kind of tussled and now they're just staring at each other Ooh. here. Let me use this, uh, spray, this, uh, air, air can. And away they go. Okay. <laughs> they, 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 they don't like that sound very much at all. So I, I don't know why, but I was expecting the air horn noise. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's just really a, clear out of the room. Yeah, no, it's just a. Yeah, it's nope. just a. It's just can't can. It's just can't can dare. Can dare is what I got. Level ASMR. <laughs> oh man. Um. Uh. Let's see. So we all talked about our endings. Yes, we did. Okay. Uh, Rip says, what game series have you had enough of and won't be interested uh, in for more sequels? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know that I've like sworn off of any of them. Like, especially if I've, if I have played more than one of them before, like, unless it looks like it's going to be absolute dog shit. I, I don't know. Like, I, well, I, I don't don't assume um, animosity and like they should never make it. Maybe it was maybe it's just like yeah, they landed that pretty well. Like I'd, yeah, I'd I, like to see I, that studio do other things. I got some answers to this. Okay, I'll, uh, Modern Warfare. Like after Infinity Ward left, I was pretty done following that. Like mm-hmm. that was a pretty rapid descent. Uh, Assassin's Creed. I still will go back like every fifth or sixth game, but mm-hmm. outside of that, like. Usually it doesn't seem interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. David, how about you? Yeah. Um, uh, that's a tough one. Um, I don't know if this counts, but I would like to see them uh, stop making Skyrim. Okay. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> literally Skyrim itself. <laughs> Just literally, the, literally that game, huh? Yeah. yeah I, I, what I want is a mainline game set in elsewhere. Yeah, yeah. So if they just uh, the fact that they are just keeping if for people are unaware elsewhere is the uh, it's the home of the Kaji. Uh, it's the, it's yeah, the... like just the fact that Skyrim is maybe the least interesting setting of the Elder Elder Scrolls area. When you when you got when you have Vardenfell when you have Morrowind like. It's real tough to, yeah. It, it's real tough to like go to Cyrodiil. Uh, yeah, you know, or the, go to, yeah. That, that kind of the first time it came out way way long ago was in the peak like next gen drab is cool window. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we're gonna get we're gonna get stuff that's gray. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, Dennis, how about you? Yeah, I I think my answer would be the Vermintide games. Okay just i i feel like i came to the first one um late in the game and everyone kind of moved on and the second one came out and i didn't have a computer that could run it right and then by the time i, I got a computer that could run it everyone had moved on so it's like i need to keep the community uh in in the current game so i can fully enjoy it uh versus them keeping on launching uh mm-hmm. and thankfully i think vermintide 2 is a little bit more designed to be uh sustainable long term have legs uh, yeah yeah, not not that I want everything to be a forever platform, but specifically the format of that game, the kind of Left for Dead esque game, um, yeah. se- seems like you don't want to just keep on pumping out sequels. It came out pretty good. Cool. The second one came out pretty quick. It seemed. Mm-hmm. It, it really did feel like they they kind of cut their teeth and were like, okay, we've got something here, um, and then the sequel cemented yeah. it. Well, and they did the same was... with Left for Dead too. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. Destiny esque. <laughs> yeah i don't know that i'm like disinterested in it but i'm definitely skeptical i feel like the witcher 3 specifically blood and wine uh put such a good cap like my my Geralt left in a very good place uh Mm. you know uh and so i have no idea what their plan is if uh what you know what their next game if they're going to continue his story or move on with somebody else no clue zero clue at all 
but like, oh good they've just destroyed any goodwill i had for them <laughs> why mm -hmm. oh because of cyberpunk cyberpunk yeah uh well cyberpunk all the anti-trans stuff and yeah. then apparently mistreating their employees oh yeah their their, their labor labor stuff is a real uh that's a real nightmare yeah Ugh. <sighs> oh, so I, I missed at the top in, in other video game uh, uh, video news. I, I finished The Witcher season two. Oh, on how Netflix was Netflix oh. this week? Uh, it was good. It, that show, uh, I think I, I am not at all um, indoctrinated into the Witcher fandom. fandom. Like I, I don't really have any reference point. And that show mm -hmm. leans very heavily on the assumption that um you, you kind of are familiar or maybe a fan of the game or or know what's going on in the world it's more about the um, books than anything yeah oh uh, well, yeah and that, there's there's that as well so the the it kind of um assumes you know the reference material yeah there were multiple points where where jen and i paused and we're like okay <laughs> let's work out what just happened <laughs> That is a oh. show that I would say is like a second monitor show where it's like, I'll put it on one monitor, but I'm going to be doing something else on my left one. And like, yeah. I'll catch a, a gist of what's happening. But... <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, you, know, you, you can watch the cool fights and then just completely check out of everything else. Yeah. Huh. All right. Sorry. I, 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 I digress. <laughs> uh, Andrew writes, what genre or game franchise would you like to see made into a roguelike or roguelite? Uh, and for genres with existing roguelikes, uh, how would you change them? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may need to recuse from this one because you really don't like uh, games no. in the roguelike structure. What, what I'm hearing is that he really wants a Stanley Parable roguelike. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind yeah, of like I, a roguelike. I, Knowledge I you assemble with each one. <laughs> if if there be some way to get rid of like permadeath and still have a roguelike, yeah i i know that seems like why one, one of those things that seems impossible but i feel like then eventually some games gonna do it and it's gonna be like oh yeah it was so obvious why didn't we think of that but mm -hmm. <laughs> i was gonna this say oh good yeah no, i was wasn't gonna answer anything substantial i was saying this is a tough question because like it would be hard to do it for any sort of multiplayer game because then you would like have a power imbalance pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, hmm. Sorry. What were you going to say? Is that what Rust is? <laughs> uh, well, things don't carry over with Rust, right? You right. wipe everything. Yeah. Um, I, um, I don't know. It's it, it, like, I have more answers for like what I would like to see D rogue liked, you know, I don't have the same, uh, <laughs> I don't have the same animosity that, uh, the, the, the David that you have for this, but like, I don't know, like a, like a single player fixed run of dead cells is a thing that I've always talked about, you know, like I just, I wish that game had a different structure. Um, same thing with like returnal. Right. Uh, but to answer to actually answer the question, I would say like turn-based strategy, like, uh, that, that seems like a good way to set things up, randomize maps, um, you know, make it run based, going on like a you know short campaigns like into a dungeon or what have you i know there's mm -hmm. into the breach but that is like very specifically almost like a chess puzzle kind of thing um yeah i'm, mm -hmm. I'm leaning more towards like uh you know final fantasy tactics uh kind of deal i'm gonna say xcom 2 is technically that way but it's such a long time scale that uh yeah you know it, it's like do you do you want a roguelike where each run is 60 hours i need a i need like uh battles to be less than 10 minutes would be my mm -hmm. would be my preference on this yeah i'm gonna steal your answer as well cole like you need to like you need to cap the time if you have a rogue like yeah. and like that's something that you should definitely your, be aware of your iteration loop just cannot be cannot be in the tens of hours yeah, yeah. even even in like the twos or threes of hours i think it's very much pushing it and yeah. that's like what dead cells is yeah um yeah how about you dennis um, for, for a new genre, I could see it being very interesting doing some kind of, uh, racing and roguelike mashup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just, just the idea of like damage to your car, uh, from crashing or like, you know, not being able to just reset when you miss a checkpoint, uh, can make things really interesting. You know, some, some kind of incentive to, to keep on going, push through and have that be fun instead of frustrating. Oh God. Do um, a, do like a, like, like a roguelike cannonball run, uh, kind of thing. Ooh, yeah. yeah yeah um 
And then for, for adjusting... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I get that this this isn't you know specifically what you're talking about, but I feel like Trackmania kind of is a uh, racing game roguelike. Uh, maybe like it, it, you know trying to get the perfect run through a level but i'd say it's more more the uh the little big planet of racing games yeah um like, from the outside that game seems way more like uh mastering fixed spaces as opposed to anything where systems would collide with each other yeah in unexpected the, uh, ways. the community would revolt if anything that seemed like random chance entered the equation yeah yeah uh, yeah, but the, so for uh, adjusting existing roguelikes, I, I would like to see a um, I know how roguelike works, uh, roguelikes work and just zoom me to when everything is unlocked button. <laughs> like I, I don't want to do the grind to unlock all the systems. I want to have everything at my disposal and I want to I want to do runs yeah. um, not being artificially gated off from certain opportunities. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think of I, I'm still playing Slay the Spire pretty consistently on my phone, um, and everything's unlocked. Every every character is at a pretty high ascension level, and that's always very rewarding. Um, but when I had to, when I switched from PC to phone, I had to go back through all the unlocking all the cards and the characters and stuff, and it was just that was painful. Um, and, and I think even when I start playing new roguelikes now, there is you know the they have to be built for someone who's never played a roguelike before. Right. Right. Um, but for everyone who kind of speaks that language, there should just be a way to skip to, um, you know, having all the systems up and running. Yeah. The, 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 the I get it button. No, yeah. take yes. me to, <laughs> yeah. Yes, indeed. Hmm. Uh, let's see here. Ricky asks, do you have any odd habits or quirks that you do while gaming? I held my breath whenever my character's swimming underwater to see if I could make it to the other side of the tunnel cutscene or whatever. Bonus points. If you ever thought, uh, everyone else did it too. <laughs> this one, this one's fresh in my mind. Okay. Um, from, from playing a, a doom like game, but I hardcore like lean, as I'm traversing, um, and if you know, if I'm if I'm trying to like you know run straight to the left to dodge something, I will lean all the way to the left or straight to the right, etc. It's it's basically like my my upper torso is just a giant joystick that I'm trying to add a little <laughs> momentum in whatever way. Yeah, it's like uh, yeah, I would always make fun of my stepdad or my dad if they were playing a racing game. They would turn the uh, they would they would uh, turn the controller turn the controller like they were holding a wheel, and it's like ah, yeah. you know. Now I know just that ah, whatever helps. Well, it's a, uh, it's, um, it's gotten to the point where, you know, if I, if uh, there was a period of time where I didn't have a headset mic and so I was using my, my podcasting mic, which is kind of, you know, up in front of my face and uh, I would try to push people in apex legends and lean forward enough that I like bashed into them. <laughs> Damn it. Get there faster. Get there faster. Uh, yeah. So that, that one's mine. Nice. Uh, I don't have one. I'm, I'm a fidgeter. I it, it get up and I take frequent breaks, you know, mm. like, uh, uh that, that, I think that's more just to do with attention problems than anything, but, uh, yeah. How about you? How about you, uh, Ben? Uh, I have one for board games. So I was going to share that. Uh, this one's fresh in my mind cause I played twilight struggle over the weekend, but, and I did this with you, Cole, uh, Twilight Struggles Cold War Simulator, where there's it's U.S. versus Russia. Uh -huh. So bringing an American beer and bringing a Russian Imperial Stout and mm -hmm. making the person on each side drink the uh, appropriate one, <laughs> uh, I think is a nice tradition. And yeah. then whenever I play Twilight Imperium, a different board game that takes like all day to play, I always would like making a bunch of food in the morning and like eat just basically like snacking all day i um, I, I think your i think your odd habits or uh, odd habit or quirk is just being really considerate <laughs> <laughs> i know it's very strange <laughs> uh how, how about you david man um i'm not sure I mean, I, I feel like the answer is that just means I don't know what my weird habits are. Right. <laughs> I, I would say uh, my guess is that you always close digital, digital doors behind you. That's oh, me. Oh, yeah, I do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely do that. Um, especially in games where, you know, like something might try to sneak up on you, but even not that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely do that. <laughs> don't want to let in a digi draft. Exactly. <laughs> nice. Uh, last one here. 
Jeff says, quick, you've just sold 12 million copies of your previously semi-niche action RPG games um, and have a lot of new fans to please with your next release. What primary feature do you add to your sequel slash next project? I think they're talking about Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Or, uh, or um, you know. He, he uh, worked on a project that we don't know about that's doing very well. <laughs> Are we doing his homework? <laughs> did, did Jeff work on Elden Ring? I, kudos. That's a good game. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I've, I, So Elden Ring itself adds so much that it's really difficult for me to say, like, oh, the, it would have been killer with, like, you know, just this because so much of it made me feel taken care of it's very difficult to like on the spur of the moment say like, Oh yeah, this would make the difference or like this will, this will please folks. I can say like what my hope would be like, you know, maybe don't make it, don't, don't follow the dark souls curve and make things difficult, more complicated. I feel like they're mm-hmm. in a really good spot with that, but that's not in the spirit of the question. So I might have to pass. Uh, I'm going to say this. And if it's been in the game and I just forgot about it, I apologize but I want a um, invade the invaders mechanic, mm-hmm. like where you know you lay a trap or to like pull invaders to your world or something like that. Where it's like, you know, you can you can kind of hunt the hunters if you're feeling up for a challenge. Yeah, no, there are factions you can join as early as um, as Dark Souls Two, I believe. There was the, the, there was a, um, a a covenant in Dark Souls One that was supposed to be a little like that, where you go after sinners. But the, that mm-hmm. covenants in Dark Souls One are real weird and loosey goosey, especially as regards multiplayer. Um, but yeah, two, the, the, there, it was there like are could... cop. Oh, go ahead. There are basically cop factions you can do. Like it's especially a thing in Three, and uh, Elden Ring has it as well. Okay, yeah, yeah I must have missed it also has a number of uh items and abilities to just like fuck with invaders yes disguise yourself etc i did that i turned into a jar (laughs) fun videos about that yeah Mm -hmm. i um i know two had what was like the blue brothers or something like the blue knights or something yeah there was way Um, of way of blue and then the blue sentinels yeah yes 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 but i i remembered those being more like uh tour guides for newbies rather than specifically um let's go fuck with invaders yeah yeah it's uh it it ends up being a little bit different in in each of the ones but all but Mm -hmm. most of them end up having like okay invaders invaders need a uh, counter check against them here you go Mm -hmm. yeah david you played so nothing i would add nothing (laughs) David, you yeah, played out. So yeah. I, I think you guys are thinking about this all wrong. Um, I've got a a uh, a hit game. Uh, so for my next one, what I'm going to add is a deluxe edition, so I can bilk people out of more money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, may, maybe some DLCs and microtransactions, like just just sell out. You have yeah. to know when to sell out. Put some biscuit mm-hmm. wheels on that gravy train. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. for me, I would be inspired by what Coder did from one to two, which is don't overdo it. Don't think of too many things to add. Just like polish what you got and focus on like adding more content and like adding like a new storyline and something interesting. Players. But like do some small like quality of life improvements, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. oh, I just remembered um, my real answer. Okay. This is from forever ago um, in 2014 when Dark Souls 2 had come out. Um, and I think, Cole, you were, you were, we like took a break week because you were on assignment play. Um, and it was actually just me and then uh, Murph. Murph Murphy. Yeah. Murph, you're still listening. Hi. <laughs> um, but we, we did a, um, an episode to talk about Dark Souls 2 having never played it. Yep. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the idea that came out of that was do do some mechanic in the game to go back to previous builds or patches of the game. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and and I, I remember mentioning just a couple of weeks ago about how I felt this anxiety about like I didn't play OG Elden Ring, mm-hmm. um, so I won't I won't have the murder dogs or or you know whatever it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's some some way that the game is officially like a diegetic way to go back to <laughs> earlier versions would be really interesting and just just a nod to the like the way that community is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it would lock you out of multiplayer unless you were against people who were on that same, uh, kind of on that same branch of things, but yeah. 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 I think that it's a, you know, you, you get the red flag on your account while you're doing that, but mm-hmm. um, still would be interesting. Yeah. Oh. A kind of a similar thing. My, my actual answer I think is uh nemesis system from uh shadow of war. Oh yeah. I think, almost every action game would be better uh uh better with that and in particular i think it'd be really cool to have that in a racing game oh yeah like especially one of the like underground racing things have like have a cop uh oh cop rival that would you know progressively soup up his car to go after you and stuff. <laughs> yeah you're, you're you're describing uh one of the more recent need for speed most wanted games i don't know if you realize oh, that really yeah that exists <laughs> nice yeah uh cool well thank you everybody for writing in your questions we um uh, appreciate it if you would like to participate in multiplayer in the future go to facebook.com slash the level podcast and watch for the prompts to go up on monday afternoons thank you very much dennis for posting Mm-hmm. The end boss. Now it is time for the end boss, where we talk about things that are happening in the world of video games around us. Hey guys, a thing is happening. So Cole has to do a news oh, new, new no. story about it. Oh shit! Uh, <laughs> there is a new indie game coming out that is somewhat related to horror games. Uh, it is called Save Room or Save Room. Uh, this is <laughs> something that I have semi facetiously asked for. And uh, um, uh, we're going to get it. So this is a whole game of Resident Evil 4 style inventory management. You are given a briefcase and you are given a whole uh, kind of like host of items. Just a to, to, just to cr- crew of things that you got to put in there in limited space and make fit. And it is literally just space optimization. Doesn't sound <laughs> too complicated. Uh, does sound satisfying. Uh, and it's going to be coming out on Steam here real soon. Uh, I think like April 28th or something like that. Uh, at least it's scheduled uh, scheduled for that here. Save room and organization puzzle. Uh, looks cool. I uh, If that is coming out on the right day or right time, it'd be fun to stream that, I think. So, yeah, I may do it. This is really fun looking. Mm-hmm. I hope this is like an experiment to try and solve like the package packing problem. It's like an unsolvable oh. problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're just gonna, they're just using that like a folding at home uh yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is also about packing things but, mm-hmm. i mean but like folding to pack your luggage you know i don't need to impress you uh, <laughs> 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 uh so uh dennis what's sega up to yeah, I, I guess this is technically another thing is happening. Um, but the Sega had been working on a, a codenamed Super Game project um, that they were pretty tight lipped about what it was, what it was all about. And uh, now it's been revealed that they are rebooting uh, both Jet Grind Radio, uh, excuse me, Jet Set Radio, uh, and the Crazy Taxi games, um, and they are giving them a triple A reboot uh hmm. meaning this isn't just a you know a, a port of previous versions of the game into a, a new system like this is new games um and and hopefully you know uh, significantly updated for the better um that that are going to be coming out mm-hmm. uh they've also said that that this kind of idea of the super game label is is going to be ongoing so this is not just these two games there's going to be more that fit that mold which no word on what that might be yet uh, in mm-hmm. terms of more games but man um you know jet set radio and uh and crazy taxi have been dead a long time and i still think back fondly to the crazy taxi games but i i assume they were firmly relegated to the um cheap mobile spinoff space uh so cool to see them coming back 
Yeah. Uh, Crazy Taxi games are really good. Uh, if you see one mm-hmm. in an arcade, sit down and play it because it has one of the most satisfying um, uh, free, sp- one of the most satisfying free spinning steering wheels. Uh, it's a it's a real mm. uh, uh, just well designed, put together cabinet. Uh, that so I your enjoy. dad and stepdad don't look like fools when they play it. No, no, it's necessary. <laughs> it's just good strategy, is what it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I'll be. I, I'd be down for a remake of both of these things. Uh, calling mm-hmm. them super games or whatever probably is setting expectations a little too high, but eh, whatever. Yeah, and then the other, uh, you know, the other cloud uh, on the horizon is they've mentioned that they might be using these to experiment with NFTs. <sighs> Which, please God, <laughs> let someone there have the self awareness to see what has happened with I don't know every NFT game so far, and and duck out of that real quick. Let's just get past the backlash and the apology, and they just not do it. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Save it for everybody. Ugh. No, no, um, no. Because then it's a redemption arc. If we say we're going to do it, everyone gets angry, and then we take it back. It's no, everybody still remembers that you tried to do it. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Ben, what's happening? Uh, what's happening with uh, them Star Wars games? Uh, I'm going to do the Elden Ring one instead. Do uh, it, okay? A, t- uh, a TLDR: <laughs> Amy Hennig started a Star Wars company. They're making Star Wars games again, but hopefully they actually don't get canceled this time. Hopefully, anyway. <laughs> Elden Ring one. This is just a meme, so this is just something that's like happy. I think you guys probably maybe have heard of it uh, mm-hmm. over the past week. But uh, over the past week, there is a player who's kind of rose to fame in Elden Ring. Uh, who would appear by as a summon by uh, one of the toughest bosses in the game, Melina, Melinia, Millennia, um, yeah. Millennia, and all he would have a message written by him that just said, "Let me solo her." Uh, this person was half naked, had two katanas, and had a pot on their head. <laughs> <laughs> And so people would summon them in, and then he would just run and beat the boss. Uh, <laughs> not, getting <rid> of them all. <laughs> not not just beat the boss. When you summon in, um, you know, bosses end up getting a pretty hefty HP. Yeah, they get they get yeah. a, uh, an HP boost. So beating a more difficult version of the boss with no armor on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I watched a video of them of them doing it. It was pretty pretty entertaining. Yeah. Uh, basically, just doesn't get hit. Just uh, has the timing down. So basically, knows when to take a pot shot. Mm-hmm. Um, took maybe like eight to ten minutes or so, and then did a very uh, uh, like a proud bow before and after <laughs> killing the boss to the players, and then did I think it's like I think it's the name of it's like. Uh, rapture i think is the emote or something like that uh-huh. yeah. where like hold two hands up as he gets like summoned back to his own world and, uh, <laughs> yeah it was just a nice like pleasant experience God. uh and it's gained so much fame that apparently today uh they had made a mod that you can summon him for uh, instead of the default summon i forget uh-huh. what it's called like the gray people or whatever uh-huh. um so that can be your default summon now uh, every time <laughs> you this, fight a boss. <laughs> is this naked man with a pot on his head? Uh, that's really yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I always like the, 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 the goofy, good-natured uh, kind of gimmick, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, g- gimmick invaders or gimmick, uh, gimmick co-op. <laughs> it's just, uh, man, mm-hmm. the, the, it can be a real good community when it wants to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let me solo her um that's a tough that's a tough boss fight too that took me a very long time uh let's see uh david what is uh what what is happening uh you've got two stories here so i will let you yeah so to furry um, or not to furry (laughs) yeah so the the first story uh basically the second one it's just that this is the thing that's gonna happen so um first story is Someone is developing and has been developing uh, for apparently for four years now a mod for Half-Life 2 that replaces Alex with Crystal, the blue fox chick from uh, Star Fox. And uh, now he has somehow uh, gotten the original voice actor of Crystal, S. Estelle Ellis um, to re-record all of Alex's dialogue. <sighs> um, yeah, so some somehow that happened. Uh, also, apparently, they are... Uh, he notes that he is going to try to get a different character model 
uh, because this uh, the current character model has uh, very jiggly boobs. Right, and that kind of goes against the Alex. You know, she's not necessarily. She she basically worships you as Gordon Freeman, but she's not uh, like hypersexualized, at least not to the boob jiggle kind of way. Yeah. I just I, I want to know what is the the section of audience that like really wants this this furry crossover in their Half Life Two, but doesn't want it sexualized. <laughs> I feel like it's got to be a small Venn diagram. You know, I just want people to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. You know, just uh, literally this this ultimately comes down to this seems like a lot of work. I couldn't do it. It's none of my business. I hope they have fun. <laughs> uh, at least it sounds like they're getting support doing it. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what's the other one, David? Um, so the other one is um, they are adding the 100th character to idol champions of the Forgotten Realms and have announced that the uh, 100th character is going to be Dungeon Master from the old uh, Saturday morning D&D cartoon. Okay. What? Yeah. Who's, you know, kind of this wizard character that uh, one, one of his things in the cartoon is uh, he's sort of their enigmatic guide, so he'll just randomly disappear at inopportune times. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gandalf's so, it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so, in order to replicate that mechanic, um, that will actually happen with this character. And when he's gone, he will be replaced by another character from the show, Uni the Unicorn. Yeah, <laughs> no. The, 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 the annoying, like, animal mascot kind of thing. Um, I hate, I hate both of them. That, that is a very hard show to watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh you know that's the thing i actually honestly have never seen the show but i really appreciate you know the the effort to like kind of dig that down into the you know history of the game and do that yeah no that's absolutely a good way to go uh although technically i believe that one was gray hawk ish so them being in forgotten realms is a little bit of a weird one to me but hey you know who am I yeah, to judge? So this is very much a uh, the Planescape version of Forgotten Realms. Okay, okay. Yeah. So do you get, like, Lord Soth in there or whatever? Or? I'm, I'd am i have to check on that. I know there's a lot of Ravenloft stuff and um, at least a little bit of Critical Role. Okay, yeah. Huh. Huh. Well neat it's it is good that they're looking back at that but thank god that is not a game that has voiced characters because <laughs> woof <laughs> seriously that shows it the, the the most unpleasant sounding one of the most unpleasant sounding things uh mm. yeah uh, well i think that sounds like a show how do you all feel about bumming it up agree buttons the credit Thank you so much for listening to episode number 411. We just gave you the 411. Just figured I'd get out in front of that one, nip it in the bud. Yes. Yeah. Um, and if you want the 412, you'll come back next week. Maybe tell a friend. Maybe leave, your, maybe leave a rating or review. Maybe uh, uh, participate in the multiplayer uh, by going to facebook.com slash the, the level podcast. You have listened to a podcast before and you know what to do. Just a reminder, the early release feed is going away. There will be announcements uh, about other stuff in relation to that. Uh, that changeover is happening at the end of April and to the beginning of May. And it uh, should make things easier for everybody. Hopefully. I've thought that before and it hasn't been true, but hopefully. <laughs> um, Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, is there anything I'm forgetting? So we're definitely doing something for episode uh, 420, right? <laughs> yeah, I, have some, I have some gummies I haven't eaten yet, but I think that would be really deleterious <laughs> to my hosting abilities. I, uh, I, I, I mean, if I, by deleterious you mean awesome, you mean del hilarious. I I can't find words. I have more. I already can't find words. I have more trouble. <laughs> I have more I like trouble. This idea. 
eat them at the start of the episode, and then that gives us an incentive to finish on time. <laughs> Speaking of finishing on time, I've been Cole Ross. Uh, you- <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> you can uh, find me on Twitter at Cole Ross. Uh, I've been Dennis Furia, and you can let me solo her. Hi, I'm David Mysmith. Uh, just David Mysmith. I've been Ben Merkel. And stick around for some titles. <laughs> moving on uh, <laughs> uh i don't have any what do other people have let us see here okay so i have two i have uh never pass up an easy ghost <laughs> and we don't call that techno we call that edging okay <laughs> uh from the same conversation i've got all drops <laughs> Uh, and then as well, conjugate. Okay. Ben? In an act of self-indulgence, I only had conjugate. Okay. Let's do conjugate. I like it. Cool. All right. Well, I'm going to go and go to bed. I'm tired and I am no longer here. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Have a good day off tomorrow. Yeah, uh, or day off. Day not recording, I should say. Yes. Have a good week, everybody. Um, mm-hmm. Enjoy your uh, Comic Con, David. Have a good time. Hey, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, See you guys around. Take care, all. See you guys. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.